You're watching Truth vs. Hype. The CBI's latest FIR in the coal allotment scam against a highly regarded former coal secretary and a highly regarded industrialist might demonstrate that it's not fully able to distinguish between what could be simply unorthodox policy reversals on one hand and outright corruption on the other. But just because there might be serious question marks about the evidence that it has managed to summon up in the Hindalco affair doesn't mean that in other instances money didn't change hands or wrongful allotments didn't get made. And so a more germane question to ask might be why the CBI is still falling short of being able to unearth the real deep-seated conspiracy and corruption underlying coal allotment. The facts whether In his Hyderabad he home, P.C. Parak, the man who anticipated the potential crisis in the allotment of captive coal blocks, mulls over the irony of the latest to be named in a CBI FIR. The scope of the CBI inquiry stretches to a time much before Mr. Parak came into the picture, from 1993, the time when the government decided to partially open up coal mining to the private sector only for captive use for their power, cement or steel plants. The first decade saw very little interest, only just over a 20 blocks being allotted between 93 to 2003. But it's the five years after that, 2004 to 2009, which has become the area of the CBI's greatest interest, when 77 blocks were allotted to private players. P.C. Parak became coal secretary at the cusp of the boom in March 2004. He says the interest in coal reflected India's growing energy needs. But the massive demand, he says, exposed the weaknesses of the allotment process, carried out by a screening committee made up of members of the ministries of coal, power, steel and state governments. As in when number of applications keep increasing and who all qualify our basic criteria that they are financially strong, technically strong yes. and they have a project to, for which they need coal. It's hard to justify hard which to one is hard to decide whom to give and whom not to give. So if you give coal based on, um, on an auction, then you don't have those issues. Within three months of taking office, Parak wrote the first of a series of letters to his superiors, suggesting a switch to a transparent bidding process. He wrote to the Minister of State Dasari Narayan Rao and Union Coal Ministers, which rotated between the Prime Minister and JMM leader Shibu Soren. Prime Minister does not. Parak says that the Prime Minister was amenable to the suggestion, but all other stakeholders were against it. Yes, Prime Minister readily agreed with this and he asked me to put up a position paper. And uh, I did put up a posi position paper on which he in principle agreed with that and wanted me to submit it a cabinet, cabinet note. But what was the reaction of your Minister of State to that position paper? While my Minister of State uh, as well as my Cabinet Minister at that time, Mr. Shivam Surya. Yeah, Minister of State was Mr. Dasari Narayan Rao. Both of them were not in favour of this decision. The most direct opposition, he says, came from Dasari Narayan Rao and Shibu Soren. And did they try to block and oppose this shift at every step? Yes, they did because um, even after Prime Minister had approved this, in principle, this system, mm. Mr. Shibu Sorin as Cabinet Minister, he said that uh, I am as Cabinet Minister not in agreement with this proposal and we should, uh, should not go forward with this. We should shelve it. We should shelve it. And uh, that's why this I lost about six to eight months in uh, this process. Now, why did you think Mr. Shibu Soren and Mr. Dasri Narendra were so opposed to what is otherwise a, a, a much better system? You should be able to make equally equally reasoned guess about. No, but I want to hear it from you. Were, did, were you aware by then that this had become a very very lucrative business of allocating coal blocks under the captive policy, and that's why nobody wanted to change it. I have already always said that when you are. Uh, you are dispensing large resources of uh, big value without charging anything, a rent seeking is possible. The coming to light of an exchange of letters between PC Parak and Shibu Soren demonstrates the attempts to dislodge Mr. Parak from his post. In February 2005, Soren wrote to the Prime Minister saying Parak should be transferred because he had asked Parak for information on the coal mafia which he claims Parak withheld. He also said that he'd received a number of complaints against Parak from MPs. 
Parak wrote back a month later a strong response where he said that Shibu Soren would have the best knowledge of the coal mafia since he came from Jharkhand, the state which is the strongest base for the mafia. He also said that as far as the question of MPs was concerned, anyone could pay an MP to get a letter. And most damningly, he said that the mafia was no longer outside the government but had penetrated both the government as well as Coal India but that the government lacked the political will to do anything about it. By the end of December 2005, Mr. Parak had retired and the shift to a bidding system went into the coal storage for the next three years, a time when a massive slew of coal blocks were allotted via the screening committee route. The first clutch of CBI FIRs deal with blocks allotted during this period, which is why he was surprised when CBI came knocking at his door, accusing him of favouring Hindalco a company of the Birla Group.